Well, hey crafty friends, it's Heidi Scott with DIY Dreaming and on today's new episode of Christ in Crafting, we are going to do a kind of different project and the main star is hot glue. So I'm going to show you some ideas. I don't know if you know that you can do this kind of thing with it, but it's really fun. We're also going to use some children's watercolor paints, a little bit of just this is inexpensive folk art metallic gold finish paint. We're going to use some of these wood slices and you can get those everywhere. And then we're going to do a small canvas, which I don't know if this is one from Dollar Tree or Walmart or what, but super affordable and kind of different craft. And we're going to talk about peace, which we're going to talk about it from a biblical perspective. And I have a bunch of Bible verses to share with you, so it should be really good. Merry Christmas, everyone. I'm seeing people say that. Okay, so let's hop right in. Did you know that you can do all kinds of cool things with hot glue? You can create raised surfaces. This is something I made, gosh, it feels like a zillion years ago. It was probably at least four years ago. And it's a raised hot glue cross on a stretched canvas. It's been sitting up here behind me for the last, I don't know, three years. Um, so that is one example. I also wanted to let you know that a lot of things can sort of resemble the earth. And that's what the look we're going to be creating today. This was an Easter egg that I made at least four years ago as well. And I was just doing some gold uh, leafing on that. So I wanted to pull that out and show you. And then about two years ago, we did this bird's nest out of a paper lunch bag. And we made these eggs. They're just wooden. And a lot of you said that they reminded you of the earth. Um, Okay, where to start? Well, let's start with the first step. This is where we're going. These could be made into ornaments. Um, they could just be a little sit about. Um, you could hang them on a doorknob. They could be at the end of the, this one. I just need to drill a hole in the top. It could be at the end of a long string of beads with a tassel, so there's lots of different things. Okay, let's start with this first. And um, let me show you how to create a canvas that's gonna kind of remind us of the colors of the earth. And then we'll do it on a wood slice. Okay, this is some inexpensive children's watercolor paint. And when I say inexpensive, oh my gosh, super inexpensive, I'm going to add some water to my blue. And then I'm going to add some water to the green because we're using a combination. And I did learn a very important trick, not a trick, a what not to do when I was working with this. This, this is the what not to do. So I'll, I'll try to remember to tell you that. Okay, so with the canvases, you're really just going to want to get them wet. You can do it that way, or you could use a sprayer. Okay, and then I'm going to use my brush. Which one was it? This one. In my blue paint. And I'm kind of going sort of at an angle. It might have been a little bit too wet. Having it wet, though, prevents, here's a little green, let's put that in there, prevents um, dark, dark blobs, which is the thing that I got on the other one.
Okay, I'm going to take a paper towel and just mop off that big puddle in the center, which will be fine. Okay, and then we're just going to do this kind of thing and let that watercolor do its thing. And I will give this a, a good hour to dry. All the... Okay, and when it dries, it's going to look kind of like this. So that's how you paint one of these little canvases. And I'm using square because they work great to do an earth around globe. Happy Sunday, everyone. Okay, next I wanna show you how to do this, or this. Okay, first thing is, um, I'm using these uh, rounds that I got at a store in Boise, in Meridian, Idaho, actually, um, Craft Warehouse. But you can find these everywhere. You can even find this kind of thing at Dollar Tree, Walmart, Hobby Lobby, everywhere and um the mistake i made with with this is that it wasn't wet so when i put my watercolors on it it just soaked right in where i laid my brush down at the very first can you see that and i could not get that to blend at all so i want to share my do this and my don't do this Continue really getting it nice and wet. Add a little green in here and there. This would probably look better. I'm sure it would. If I was using, um, like, not children's watercolors, but, like, nice watercolors uh, but I want everybody to feel like they can do this and um, you can get watercolors even at the grocery store they're not hard to come by at all so I'm just blending a little bit of of um, green and blue into it and with these, um, with these wood rounds, you are going to have whatever the dark center is, and there's just nothing you can do about that. But I'm okay with that. It looks like there's coral reefs or something underneath the water. Okay, and this does take a while to dry. I used a blow dryer to speed mine along a little bit. All right, so that's how you do that. And I have crafted ahead, so you guys wouldn't have to wait. Um, okay. So when I first started this project, I was having a hard time thinking about what the globe looks like, what the earth looks like on a globe. And there's no way on a round circle that you can get all seven continents. So I'm sorry, Australia, I did not include you. <laughs> I just, I Googled um, drawing of the earth globe or sketch of the earth. I Googled it. And this is what I came up with. Now, I don't own this picture, so I can't share it with you. I just use this as my inspiration for kind of what the earth is going to look like on our drawing. And if you want to have a little geography lesson. Okay, here is um, North America. 
Canada, United States. This is Mexico. So this is North America. This is South America. This is um, Greenland. No, this is Antarctica, and there's one down below that's Greenland, I think. Okay, over here is Africa. This part right here is Europe, and this part right here is um, is Asia. It's sometimes called Eurasia, and then um, Australia would be down here. Okay, so I just use this kind of as my inspiration, and let me remember. <laughs> this is my start. It looks terrible. Okay, I'm using my low temperature hot gluing device. And um, first thing I want to do is just go all the way around the wood round. And you are going to have lots of lumps and bumps and spaces where your lines are not straight at all or not really a circle and that is just perfectly fine or spots where your um, glue came out really thin. This is going to dry hard and then we'll paint it. Okay, so I started on this piece doing this shape right here, which is the Europe, uh, Asia, and Africa. And that's what I have currently on my little disc here. Now I'm going to do... South America on here. I didn't leave a lot of room, so we'll scooch it way over to the side. And these are just giving a very slight nod to what these countries actually are shaped like on Earth. And then I'm going to fill in. And I'm going to try to do that while everything is still hot so it can smooth itself out a little bit. All right, that sort of looks like South America. Now let's do North America. And I know that that's not really what North America looks like, but close enough for this project. I had my husband double check that I was right about all my continents because he is a big geography buff. He loves to travel and he loves maps for some reason and he loves, um, you know, identifying those kind of things. So let me just see up close what I got going on. Okay. That doesn't really resemble North America, but it'll do. And then I'm going to do a small little blob up here for, I think this is, Antarctica or um, Greenland. Okay, and you're going to have all these terrible glue strings everywhere that are going to just absolutely drive you nuts. So I'm going to pull a couple off, and then I'm going to get my heating device from Magnolia out. I'm using a low temperature hot gluing device so I don't get burned, and I'm just going to melt my glue strings.
Okay, preparing for um, Christ and Crafting today was kind of different than how it usually goes for me. Uh, usually, I know what the craft is, and then I'm trying to figure out what the Bible verses are, or what the, the Christian faith theme is. Well, today I knew that it was going to be peace, because I saw those beautiful windows in a, a cute little boutique in Vinings, Georgia, yesterday. And um, they had on one, let there be peace on earth, and then on the other, and let it begin with me. So I have been humming that song, let there be peace on earth, for 12 hours straight, except for when I was sleeping. So I was like, okay, peace is what my theme is. And then there's so many verses in the Bible about peace and how Jesus is our peace. Um, there's different kinds of peace. Peace um, between you and God, peace between you and other men and women, peace within yourself. Uh, so I just, I thought it would be a really good topic. Um, and then I was trying to figure out what we're doing. <laughs> and that is not the normal order of things. Okay, and I could not, for the life of me, get my um, liquid gold... Uh, rub and buff open. It just, my husband even tried. So we're using this folk art paint, metallics, and this is pure gold is the color, and it came from Walmart. I'm just going to pour a little bit out. What do you guys think about this so far? I think this year, with everything going on in the world, peace is a, a really good theme. And you could make these as Christmas ornaments if you're watching this live and it's the month of December. Or you could do this project any other time of the year. Okay, so I'm just going to take some of my gold paint and I am basically going to paint. And what you will find surprisingly, is that it sticks better to the bumpy parts of your hot glue than to the parts that are smooth, for some reason, I don't know why. And this is probably going to take two or maybe three coats to get it covered. And it will start to, you'll start to have the, um, idea that this is the earth after I get these continents painted. So let me crank that out real quick. So you could probably use uh, any kind of liquid gold leaf, a gold paint like this. Um, you might be able to use uh, some actual gold leafing and uh, gilding size. That was Africa that I just painted, and I realize it's not in scale with the other continents, but I was doing this live and talking to you at the same time, and that makes it hard. So now I'm doing Europe and Asia. That seems to be the part of the world that we're talking about a lot, that's in the news a lot lately. Okay, now I'm going to do South America. And it this smoothed it out for some reason when I did it. And you'll be able to see that the glue does not stick as well. See, look, the glue doesn't stick as well to the spots where your glue has... The paint doesn't stick as well, sorry. Okay, and this is Mexico. Oops, and I have done this about 25 times. Where's my little wipe? Well, I'll get a new one. I have gotten a blob of glue outside of my continents. And you can, as long as you do it quickly, you can pretty much pull it up. It's easier on a canvas. Okay. 
good enough. I just want to get the basics of this done so that we can move on to uh, the canvas, which I think is going to be really pretty too. And if you have a bigger canvas that's square, it would be really nice to do this in a, a larger scale. This is supposed to be the eastern edge of North America. And this is, I cannot remember, can somebody tell me if the continent at the north is Antarctica and the continent at the bottom is Greenland? I seem to remember that when they named those continents, they named the one that was um, nice and habitable Greenland to discourage people from coming. And then they named Antarctica, no, the other way. Antarctica is what they named the continent that was uh, nice and habitable, and Greenland is what they named the continent at the very bottom, I believe, that wasn't so habitable, habitable that was like frozen. That's what I'm remembering from geography. I'm just doing the very basic here, and then I'll show you the other one, and we can talk about it a little bit. And I will probably, these wood slices did not have holes in them, so I will probably get the drill out and do that. So I can hang these on my Christmas tree. Okay, that is basically it. And that is sort of a small resemblance of the world. And over here would be Australia. So tell me if you're from Australia. And if you are, please don't hold that against me. I just, it's, if I had a, you know, a longer, an oval, shape. I could put everything in there. Okay, I'm seeing answers to my question about Iceland and Greenland. On this one, I went ahead and besides the rim of gold that I did in the glue, I also painted the edge of this wood round. And let's see what's what. Trying to remember how does this go? Oh, okay. On this one, I did a bigger United States, a bigger North America, and there's teeny South America. And this is over here is Europe and Asia. Uh, anyways, but you can see that I just painted the whole, and I'll probably do that on this one. But do you get the idea that this is the earth? And we're talking about that song, Let There Be Peace on Earth. Okay, so this one, let me remind myself, what's the top? Okay, here's the top. And I have painted most of the circle and most of the continents. The last thing I'm going to do with this is I'm going to use my palette knife from Dollar Tree. I love these things, and I haven't done any palette painting in a while. And I'm going to dip it in this gold paint, and then I'm just going to go around the edge. And rub a little bit of... Let me see what I'm saying. And you don't want it to be super neat. You want that to be kind of messy. What do you guys think about this craft? I hope you like it. I, I sometimes can come up with some kind of weird things. Maybe this afternoon I can stop singing 
and hemming that let there be peace on earth and let it begin with me because I will have talked about it and maybe I can get it out of my brain. Okay. This could go on a Christmas tree also. And I will get close-up pictures of everything when I'm all, all, all finished. So what do you guys think? Did you like that project? Uh, it's not hard at all. And if you want to see what do the contents look like, what does the earth look like, just Google it and you'll be able to find it and pull it up and print it if you want. I cannot share that this picture though because I don't own the rights to it. I did not draw it. Um, yeah. So, but you can find something like that easy. Okay, let me get my stuff out and we will go into the Bible here in just a second. You should see the rest of my desk. Holy moly. It's, it is a mess. I am excited, especially how this one turned out. So, we are going to talk about peace from a, a, a biblical perspective. Not, there's nothing political whatsoever in this talk, so please don't interpret anything I'm saying in any kind of a political lens, okay? I'm just telling you about what the Bible says and how it pertains to Jesus Christ. Um, and I think ultimately peace comes from knowing that God is in control, from trusting him, from loving him, and from allowing him to make the decisions and, you know, be in charge of everything that happens. That is, in my opinion, where peace comes from. So... We're going to be starting in the book of Isaiah. Let me just get open to there and then we'll pray and we'll jump right in. Isaiah chapter 9. Okay. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for this day. Lord, thank you for the peace that only you can bring us. Lord, help us to seek that. Help us to recognize it. Help us not to get distracted by what looks like it might be peace, but it really isn't because it, it does not involve you. And I just pray that this, um, these verses that you've given me, Lord, that they will be an encouragement to the people who are watching right now. In this world, we will have trouble, that is for sure. And in this world, we do have trouble. All of us have something that we're going through, Lord. Whether it's in a relationship, in our own um, physical body, uh, nations against nations, um, or maybe we don't have peace with you, but everybody has trouble. And um, I just pray that this will be an encouragement and that people will see that the only one true way to find peace is through Jesus Christ. So I pray all of this in your precious name. Amen. Okay, so peace. Um, that was the word that I chose this year. Of course, I completely forgot by about June. <laughs> but that was the thing that I chose as my year, word of the year. Because what I really wanted was peace with myself and peace in relationships. Um, but it's so much bigger than those two things. Um, so I have been thinking about peace a lot, especially with everything happening in the world. 
And, um, and then yesterday I saw that beautiful set of windows that was painted for Christmas that said, let there be peace on earth and let it begin with me. And then I'd been singing that song and I was like, okay, Lord, I get it. <laughs> I'm talking about peace today. So that song, in case you're curious, it was written in 1955 and it was not written for Christmas. It was written for a children's choir, I believe I read. And just over the years, people have sung it all over the world. And it's become what is associated with Christmas as a Christmas song. So it's a song that we'll hear and see in Christmas art and decor a lot. So let's talk about what peace is. And let's start in the Old Testament. Um, I don't know if you've ever read the book of Isaiah or studied it, but it is such a good book of the Bible to study. Don't start here if you're brand new. <laughs> start in the book of John if you're brand new to the Bible. But if you've been in your Bible for a little while, it's so good. And there are so many um, prophecies and I don't know what the right word is. Images of what Jesus would come to do in the book of Isaiah. Um, so in Isaiah chapter 9, verses 6 to 7, I'm going to read that to you. And that was a prophecy of Jesus Christ and the Prince of Peace, which is what he is. And I'm sure you have heard this. Um, it's part of the Christmas story. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given. And the government will be on his shoulders. And he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Um, I have so many good memories of these verses. It just kind of makes me a little bit, a little bit weepy. Um, so that is definitely, definitely a prophecy of Jesus and what he would bring. He would bring us the wonderful counselor. He was mighty God. He was everlasting father. And he was prince of peace. And he still is. And then if you go ahead to um, chapter 53 in the book of Isaiah. Verses 1 to 5. This is um, titled in my Bible. And mine is an NIV translation. The old NIV. It's called the suffering and glory of the servant. Whoops, let's go back. Uh, no, that's the previous passage. This is a passage that is quoted a lot at Easter. And it starts with, Who has believed our message, and to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? He grew up before him like a tender shoot, and like a root out of dry ground. He had no beauty or majesty to attract us to him, nothing in his appearance that we should desire him. He was despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows and familiar with suffering, like one from whom men hide their faces. He was despised and we esteemed him not. Um, and... He, um, surely he took up our infirmities, that's what he did, and carried our sorrows. Yet we considered him stricken by God, smitten by him and afflicted. But he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our inequities. The punishment that brought us peace was upon him, and by his wounds we are healed. And that's a bit, uh, a vision 700 years before Jesus even came on the scene of the crucifixion. And it's referring again to Jesus as the one who brings peace. So both of those verses from the Old Testament, and there's lots more, um, really give you a picture of peace. Peace with God, peace with ourselves, and peace with our neighbors as coming from Jesus Christ. In the New Testament, let's go to the book of Luke, which this is a book that is at church service on, on Christmas Eve. A lot of times your pastor or minister is going to read from this. Find it. 
It's Luke chapter 2, verses 1 through 14. I'm going to read all of that uh, because it's, it's all together. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quinerius was governor of Syria. And everyone went to his own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. And there, uh, and there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. Today, in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find the baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of heavenly hosts appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth, peace to men on whom his favor rests. So, as a baby, when he came, he brought peace. And then, also in the book of John in chapters, or, um, yeah, Book of John, chapter 14, let me get there, uh, verse 27, it says, and this is Jesus talking, okay, because it's in red print, that's how you can identify that. He was talking to his disciples and telling them what was going to be happening, but Honestly, it was not what they thought was going to happen, and they really did not understand what he was predicting or what he was saying would happen. So towards the end of this talk with his disciples, he said in verse 27, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give you. I do not give you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. And um, in the note, it says, The end result of the Holy Spirit's work in our lives is deep and lasting peace. Unlike worldly peace, which is usually defined as the absence of conflict, this peace is a confident assurance in any circumstance with Christ's peace. We have no need to fear the present or future. If your life is full of stress, allow the Holy Spirit to fill you with Christ's peace. Um, okay, and then in same book of John in chapter 16, and I hope I'm not going too fast, but if you want the list of verses, just say verses and I'll, I'll give them all to you. And then... Read the verse, and if it's not familiar, then read, you know, around it. Read that chapter of the Bible. Okay, so in John chapter 16, verse 33, this is Jesus talking about the Holy Spirit, and he says, it's in red. Anything in red that Jesus actually said, you can take that to the bank. It's, it is so. It's, he says, I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In this world you will have trouble, but take heart, I have overcome the world. And he tells us these things so that we can have his peace. In the note below, I have what's called a Life Application Study Bible that is amazing. Mine is the old NIV translation, but... 
if you're in the market for a Bible, uh, um, I totally would recommend this kind of a study Bible. It's called Life Application Study Bible. Okay. Um, in the note, it says, Jesus summed up all the things he had told them this night, tying them, tying together themes. With these words, he told his disciples to take courage. In spite of the inevitable struggles they would face, they would not be alone. Jesus does not abandon us to our struggles either. If we remember that the ultimate victory has already been won, we can claim the peace of Christ in the most troublesome times. Okay, and then, let's see. And then in my, so we talked about how peace was referred to in the Old Testament in the book of Isaiah, which has a lot of predictions of Jesus Christ. And then we talked about, um, about peace in the New Testament in the story of Jesus' birth, um, in what Jesus actually said himself. And then the last verse that I want to talk about is from the Apostle Paul, and he is talking to the, um, the church that had been planted in Philippi. So it's in Philippians chapter 4, and it's verses 6 to 7. Um, and I think I'll, I'll back up to four, okay? This is what the Apostle Paul says, Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again, rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. So when we essentially give it to God, our concerns, our requests, our struggles, our heartaches, all those things that make us anxious and worried, and then we trust him. When we do that, we receive the peace of God that transcends all understanding, that is ununderstandable in our human minds. In the notes here, it says, God's peace is different from the world's peace. True peace is not found in positive thinking. It's not found in the absence of conflict. And it's not found in good feelings. It comes from knowing that God is in control. Our citizenship in Christ's kingdom is sure. Our destiny is set, and we can have victory over sin. Let God's peace guard your heart against anxiety. Um, gosh. I have all these personal notes written in my Bible from these verses of, of things that I have been praying throughout the years for my children and for other things. Anyways, it's sweet to read them. So I guess the bottom line here, as we're thinking about the world, our relationships, and our relationship with our Heavenly Father, the, the bottom line is God is in control. He is good. He spoke everything into existence. He knows how many hairs you have on your head. He knows how many days you have on earth. If you have trusted Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior and quit trying to make yourself right with God, but trusted that Jesus Christ did that, then your name is inscribed in the palm of God's hand and nothing can snatch you from that. Our destiny is sure and um, when we can trust all of that then we can have peace with God we can have peace with others and we can have peace within ourselves and um, that is really really good news that makes me think about that song let there be peace on earth and let it begin with me 
So I hope that this was a blessing to you and that you liked this little craft project that we did. It's totally different from anything we've done recently. Um, I hope it was an encouragement to you. And let me know if you would like the list of verses or you want my supply list. Um, or you have any questions whatsoever, just let me know. And um, I think that's it. Have a wonderful, wonderful day. God bless you, and I'll see you later.